Hey, what is up everyone? Guys, I am in shock because I turned on X and YouTube and I saw something crazy happen and that is the Boeing plane falling apart. This was just uh, this on Sunday, April 7th. And I'm just looking at this as the decay of quality on a Fiat standard. And I'll just tell you, it's, it's just been like so many times over the past couple months of these planes just falling apart, the CEO is leaving, a lot of things are happening. And it's just sad to see that a company can actually regress over time. And at what cost? At what cost? And I feel like every day now we're seeing issues with these Boeing planes. I'm even honestly frightened to fly in one of these Boeing aircrafts because you, you see literally videos every day of something happening. And now my, my question is this. How is it the year 2024 where the world's one of the world's richest countries were have one of the most liquid and deep markets? We have some of the best AI and the best tools out there and some of the smartest minds. How is it that we're having something as important as aircrafts failing on us? And I think it's also a lot to do with quality control. It has to do with procurement. It has to do with a lot of this kind of stuff. So I think in 2024, savings and expenses on materials should be a priority is what a lot of the executives are saying. As the end user, you want to make sure that you're flying an aircraft that gets you to point A to point B safely. Obviously, you want the highest materials possible. So I work in procurement, so I can give you an inside scoop. Oftentimes, we in procurement, we need to actually try to find avenues to get the best possible cost and the best possible quality, right? So there's that kind of weighting matrix you'll go by. But over time, you can only save so much on costs because the cost of goods is rising so much. And if the cost of raw materials is rising, the cost of imports, services, as your job as a category manager or a commodity manager is to try to secure a deal that can help you save money for the company. That's how you get rewarded in your job. You can save money for the company, but are those products as tried and tested and true as other products? Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. I'm just pointing out one fact, and that is procurement. Oftentimes we think, how can we save, 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 when in reality you want to take a step back and look at, okay, What's the total impact of buying this product if something were to go wrong, right? So uh, that's one thing that I see. But also, you know, this is just how capitalism gets so darn crony. Because what we're doing right now is we're saving money at the expense of risking lives. And that is literally the fiat standard that we all live in with fiat paper dollars being printed out of thin air in a nutshell, saving money at the expense of risking lives, whether it's with the food, the healthcare, the planes, the automobiles, you name it. We're always trying to save money because that's in corporations what they're rewarded to do. You want to cut down on the expense side of your balance sheet. You want to cut down on your outflows. So to do that, you need to find the best bang for your buck. Sometimes the best bang for your buck is a reduction in quality and a reduction in standards. Now, I'll tell you this. It's more than just that because quality control needs to be the utmost priority with these aircrafts. And I don't know what's going on over there, but they need a whole revamping of their quality control department from the top down. Everyone, they need to get flipped and they need to get retrained and they need to get there needs to be a production standstill because whatever's happening is not good. Now, the thing is this. We saw this. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is the downfall of many companies throughout the United States and obviously across the globe. Would you hire some? Would you hire that person if you didn't have to check a box? And don't get me wrong. I'm a white male, right? I'm not talking about like I do think there are certain things unfair right out there you know systemic stuff but the point I'm trying to make is this what so you're going to hire someone so if you have two people 
one of them doesn't check the boxes, one of them does check the boxes. The person that does check the boxes, though, maybe is 10% less efficient and they're 30% less qualified. But you have to hire him. You have to hire that person, him or her, because of the fact that you need to hit your quota, you need to hit your goal. So now what you're having happening is you're having a situation where you have a staff of employees who isn't operating at the highest level. And if they don't operate at the highest level, things may be missed. Maybe you don't tighten the screw enough. Maybe they're not double checking their work. Maybe they're not the best fit for that role. And what ends up happening is situations like we're seeing now. We're seeing situations now where planes are falling apart midair. We're seeing people, their lives are at risk. And all because we're trying to check a box at the corporate diversity level. What a mistake. What an absolute mistake. And it's so sad to see this happening. And I, I hope, I really do hope this whole DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion thing does go away over time because it's just disheartening that we think through this lens and we almost weight it equally to can someone actually do the job and are they the right fit? So I think we need to stand up and we need to speak up when we see stuff like this happening because at the end of the day, this is our lives, this is our country, this is our future. We do not want to be building aircrafts that fall apart because then we're, this stuff is just going to move abroad and they're going to move, and it probably already is, to be honest. So I think this, Bitcoin, and I always tie it into Bitcoin, but having a prudent and having prudent and wise decisions with capital is way, way better on a hard money standard, specifically a Bitcoin standard. Because with the fiat and the soft money standard, you're focused on the quarterly results. You're focused on what can you get now. You're focused on pumping the numbers, kind of um, inflating things uh, from an investor standpoint when the reality is much more dark. And if you're operating in a place where the incentives are different, the money is hard, you're going to properly allocate your money down the correct avenues better. Whereas right now it's like, just make it happen, make it happen, make it happen, throw more bodies, check the boxes. We don't even know what boxes we're checking anymore. We're just doing it because of X, Y, and Z. This needs to change. This needs to change because if we don't change, it's like I said, things will move overseas. Now, we got we to gotta fight for harder money. We got to fight for Bitcoin. But the thing is this, how does, how does this change in the end? So we need to demand change at the corporate level. We need to 120% get rid of wokeness. We do not want wokeness anymore at all. Wokeness is something that uh, I think it just, it's, it's rot. It's, it's rot from within. We need to get rid of that. But at the end of the day, we need to move into this hard money that will incentivize people to have that level mindset when it comes to quality and long-term decisions, not operating with under the microscope of the short term, how they can please the investors. We need a long-term mindset. We need that 100-year plan. We need to want to fight for the best future because right now, when it comes to things, it's quarterly, it's fiat, it's lending, it's everything is just so distorted through this fiat system that in the end, we're not looking at things properly. I hope management gets shaken up. I hope there's a whole redo of policies, procedures, and processes. I hope everything gets turned upside down for the better, for Boeing, for the safety of American consumers, but also because we want to be the pillar of leadership in this country. And right now, we're kind of the laughing stock, both politically and through the corporate lens. Guys, I really loved putting this one together. I hope you guys leave a like if you're on YouTube, uh, if you're on any of my podcasts. Please be sure to share it. Please be sure to stream sats. Leave a comment, a like, whatever means a lot. And also, I would love it if you guys could 
share it, but also be, you know, keep participating. I'm always loving putting these together. I want to keep throwing these out there and it's something that makes me happy every day. Honestly, this is, I, I feel like it's my calling. I don't know. Maybe it's not. We'll see. I love it though. It's something that is better than doing nothing. Anyways, you guys have a good rest of your day. I'll catch you in the next one.